Science. Right now, there are more than 2.5 million confirmed coronavirus cases in the United States, with the death toll. And so, when you combine accessibility and affordability, those US, things are an issue. Those things impact communities that look and like mine even more. When unemployment rate is one thing in certain communities, it's all this is the truth about the cops and what they don't want you to see or know. They don't want you to see how complete. Oh my gosh. Woof. There's so much to say. Um. Yeah, the pandemic really changed how my finals went down in terms of the resources I had, what I was able to create, and how satisfied I was with the work that I had made. All of that went down significantly. I had to change where I was staying as well um, because I, like, I live with my grandmother in Queens during the school year, um, but because she's more susceptible to COVID, I had to move out so that I wouldn't like get her sick. I've started taking life more seriously, I feel like, and like my ambitions and I'm like, oh, I've been sitting here. Maybe I can finally learn how to do, do more filmmaking or do photography and like do more multi multimodal art and poetry. So I've been doing like that kind of thing. COVID has definitely like made me like really like sit down and like really consider what I'm going to do with my life. I just hope that the economy will be okay and the job market will be okay once I graduate because I worry about that a lot. <laughs> so I actually, um, back in April, did have uh, COVID. Me and like all uh, my family members in my house had it. Luckily, like we were fine and like we all tested for antibodies and we're all positive for antibodies. Uh, so it is definitely like just a fucking crazy experience but again yeah i feel very lucky that like we were able to make it through didn't need to go to a hospital didn't have to like yeah just just seeing what other people are going through i feel very blessed i'm definitely very exhausted you know as a black person seeing black death trending my community is mainly Hispanics and Blacks, so it definitely changed the weather in the air for everyone in my community. And we have a precinct, like a police precinct, four blocks away from where I live. And I think seeing cops in my area double was even more scarier for everyone in my neighborhood. COVID already turned everyone's world upside down, I think this addition of racial tension just added it even more. My family, a lot of them have a hard time uh, accepting that the world in general was starting to blame the pandemic on Asians at the beginning of the pandemic. When Black Lives Matter started coming into the news, then they shifted the blame towards Black people. And honestly, that really hurt my heart a lot more than the beginning of the pandemic. As POCs, I feel like we should support each other. We're all just people. Yeah, we lead different lives. We all have different struggles. We all should acknowledge our own privileges. We should all be allies whenever we can be. To see other POCs kind of fighting against each other just defeats the whole purpose. I've been getting a lot of attention from my work, and it kind of feels like white guilt, like a bunch of a bunch of white guilt. I guess like a natural reaction to the things that people have been seeing going on, because it's like all those racial injustices, all these kind of bad things are happening. What is the what is the thing I could do to support? The least I could do is support a black artist. Like recently, since the protests, I've been getting a lot of like followers on Instagram and people are starting to see me and it's weird because I've always been here you know 
I've always been here and people are now choosing to see me for uh, and it's like things have to boil down to this point for me to be seen or for me to be cared about or for my art to be considered and it's kind of irritating and overwhelming and I feel like as a black artist people kind of always expect me to say something even though I've been through so much and having to see so much is like I have to always say something you know it's it's just very very exhausting <laughs> exhausting is the word for it My one friend who like we became friends because we were like oh my god you like k-pop i like k-pop you're middle eastern i'm middle eastern and she wears the hijab and like i would hang out with her and like professors would make snide comments being like oh y'all don't really speak english well that's why you don't like get good grades and stuff like that and it's like super condescending because like i was born and raised in maryland and she was born and raised in queens and English was both of our first languages, so it's like... The one that I can remember the most is in my history class. The professor made it very clear that she did not like Asians. So she would constantly compare Asians to Europeans, saying stuff like, usually Asians are very small compared to Europeans. They're very petite, very quiet compared to us robust Europeans. I don't think professors necessarily would discriminate me right away but I've definitely had instances where professors would make assumptions that weren't true like for example for my fashion business practices class in my first semester of FIT the professor was a very kind guy like well met like well-meaning and all of that but he came up to me in, uh, before one of our lessons he said oh hey we're gonna be talking about Bangladesh today uh, like maybe you could speak to like what's going on there and just like oh maybe I could get your perspective and you can help like illuminate that to the class and I was just like yeah I'm I'm from New York like I'm I'm from here. I mostly became aware of the microaggressions when I studied abroad my junior year and basically I've had like professors like touch my hair without asking like on multiple occasions I've been like misidentified like so many times and after a while you just kind of like internalize it I don't know I don't feel comfortable because like in FBM a lot of these professors are like yeah I'm the head of PVH buying so if you say something against them, you're like, oh, am I screwing over my entire career? I think it has to be addressed that we're put in this hyper competitive space where we're, we're so in fear of failing that we're not going to speak up because we're like, oh, if I speak up, then that's going to take away from my grade. That's going to take away from me possibly getting an internship because that professor is not going to recommend me to people or they're going to say that, oh, he, I'm a problem because I'm speaking out on like injustices that are happening against me because when i had a situation or a slightly big situation that happened with me and a professor and i came to them about it they were like oh we're gonna look into it we're gonna um we're gonna see something we're gonna do something and nothing ever happened so i was like after that i was like okay so i won't go to them about anything since like fashion at least like success in the fashion industry is like very like contingent upon like who you know and like the connections you make it's definitely made me like feel like i couldn't really connect to like my professors and like the staff and whatnot so i don't know it's just kind of given me anxiety about like going off into the industry and like wondering if it's going to be like that there too
I think we can all agree that almost every campus, if not all, has some sort of, has some level of racism. But when I see my own school outwardly showing such racism, it, it almost breaks my heart, especially if the campus is in the heart of New York City. I definitely feel like although like the show is obviously like very problematic, I think it was good in the sense it opened a lot of like dialogue for this to happen. I feel like a lot of like why students at FIT is like organizing and like mobilizing now is because this happened and like students like finally like realize like this is an actual problem at our school. But like on the school side, it's it's definitely just a bunch of like PR stunts, at least from what I see. I've like yet to see the school like send out an email about like how they've been racist to teachers or like students and like how they fail to like fire like professors who have like done racist things consistently. In certain ways, I think it took the right step. Those town hall meetings was I think very helpful and the presence of Joyce Brown in those town hall meetings was necessary to have. But I feel that that town hall meeting was a good step in the right direction, but there does need to be more action taken. I feel like they definitely should hold more responsibility and try to hold more responsibility for themselves. And I feel like it can get quite tiring um, to be like a colored student or a black student and to explain why they should, um, why or how they should um, gain responsibility. Cause I feel like the POC students are always the ones having to explain things constantly so i think it's kind of their part to figure it out and not so much always our part even though the professors in the film and media program are okay the majority of them are white men or white woman. I was writing a story that was like primarily based on like my experiences and my life. Like I remember telling this professor like I'm I'm having a really hard time writing this and I don't know if it's because my script half of it is in Spanish. Like I don't know what the hell was going on, but there's something that's not clicking. I'm having such a hard time writing this. And there was nothing that he could really do to clarify that for me and or kind of be like oh well why don't you try this or try that and you know I just think that if I spoke to someone who was maybe a Spanish speaker or someone who did have a Hispanic background maybe they could understand and give me some like insight as to like oh well maybe you're feeling this way so try that the main thing that I've had to deal with is just finding professors who could really understand what I was trying to say and like help me elevate it a bit more I feel like a lot of the white professors and the white students, they have <clears throat> a familiarity because they kind of, everyone doesn't live the same, but there'll be like little similarities within the life they live and within their families that allows them to connect on a deeper level. And most brown and black students don't have that because the professor is white. It's like, it's a super big disconnect. And that translates into teaching especially when like a lot of the professors go into personal experiences in the industry or out of the industry. It's like as a black and brown person, it's like, okay, that's how it works for you. But how would it work for someone like me? Like how would I navigate through the illustration industry, fine art industry, fashion design? Because it is different. It's similar, but it is different because of racial issues. Join the BSU <laughs> because whenever I've gone to the BSU, I felt so like um, close. And I've, it's like we all sit together and we talk about our experiences at FIT with like microaggressions or um, discrimination or things that have just made us uncomfortable. In February, the Black Student Union had a Black in Time exhibition and my art was in it and they asked me to to put more pieces in it and they really liked it and I felt like it was the first time that people were looking at my art and they really enjoyed it. When I first started at FIT I like put myself in a shell for like my first two semesters there because I just wasn't comfortable but like once I started breaking out of that is when I like discovered 
other people who share my perspective. It's when I joined the gospel choir at FIT and was like with a bunch of really beautiful people when I made friends with like people in BSU uh, at FIT. And, and it's just learning to like break out of your bubble. Even though like the professors and like the school might not be like aware about these issues, like the students definitely are. And I think that's like one of like, like the greatest things about this school is that like where like the school itself lacks, the students kind of like make up for it. There's like lack of black students, lack of black um, professors, lack of black illustrators in general that were shown. So I think it'd be much easier and much better if they showed us some some illustrators that look like us, some people in our fields that look like us because um, I'm a black girl and I go to FIT where all my professors are old white men. And it's like, it's so hard to see myself. I feel like FIT first needs to take a look at their entire faculty and accept what they're lacking. At the end of the day, cause like, as I said, there's an environment created where we don't feel comfortable because it's just classically been set that our perspective is usually marginalized and like kind of shut off. So if you like, you know, if you get behind them, if you understand them, if you get behind them, if you support them, then there's more of a power for speaking up. And then also your environment's going to get better too, because if an injustice is happening to one person, that injustice is also likely to happen to you in one way or another. So I think it's, it's I, I'm going to keep using the word empathy because that's what it is. It's understanding that it's <clears throat> the betterment for your fellow person is also the betterment for you. And I think that's for, yeah, non-POC people at FIT, definitely. And it's for just non-POC people in the world, generally. So I think, like, something that, you know, the school and, like, just people in general should do is, like, be accountable and like call things out like they are not like out of spite or like bitterness but like because you care about like making your school and your community better um I feel like at least like in this time we like love cancel culture but we don't like accountability so yeah until like FIT like owns up to like it's racism in like the, their own classrooms like I don't think anything's gonna change like, I like definitely feel like when it comes to the school, it's always, like, something that happens somewhere else. It's always, like, oh, this racist incident happened somewhere else. But, like, they don't, like, ever, like, take a step to, like, look inside of their classrooms and, like, look at, like, if they're doing anything, like, problematic. Make the change you want to see. Because it's not impossible, like, compared to 100 years ago. People are listening now. If you do put in that work, you'll definitely find people who are like-minded like you, who look like you, who have similar struggles, and who also have the goal of wanting to make it. You should make friends with as many different kinds of people at FIT as possible. It'll help in the long run in terms of understanding other people's cultures, how to go about being respectful to every kind of person that you encounter. And not necessarily so that you can succeed in the industry, but just succeed in general. Because being nice will get you a long way, I feel. Or at least I've been told by <laughs> my grandma. <laughs> the situation won't change till you make the first step. Despite how people look, more often than not, people are happy that someone is willing to talk to them. Do your best to, to, to be the one to put your hand out. Just be okay. Be okay reaching out. Force yourself to it. Because you can't complain about a situation and not do anything about it.